when it's still in the nursery, when it's still a seedling, just a growing this thing. That's where when you come to Christ, you have enough time to roam about looking for, you know. By the time you start developing taproot, you're going into leadership, you're going into all that. It's becoming, you know, very dangerous because you should have known how to locate the place you belong. All this period. All those times you had to go around looking, eh, years have passed. You should have known where you belong. I'm also aware that there are people that God causes to prosper in old age. Sometimes you don't blame human beings. Um, sometimes we're not well taught. Sometimes we're not well taught. So God sets people. He plans them. Psalm, Psalm 92. Let's look at it. Yeah. Verse 12. And 13. But 12 first. Psalm 92. The righteous shall flourish like palm trees. These ones are not affected by changing weather. That's the advantage. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Then verse 13. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You see it. The key to prosperity is longevity in ministry. The key to prosperity is longevity in ministry. The key to longevity in ministry is honoring your spiritual parents, just like it is in the natural. If you're going to live long naturally, you have to honor your father and mother. If you're going to live long spiritually, you're going to honor your spiritual covering, your spiritual parents. Now, it produces longevity. So you don't behave like the prodigal son. And then that longevity produces prosperity. It produces flourishing. You see, those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. Verse 14. They shall still bear fruit, what? In old age. And they shall be fresh and flourishing. A connection with the spirit of leadership produces longevity in ministry. But longevity in ministry produces visible prosperity and progress because it keeps you there long enough for your fruit to grow and for people to see it. You know, you plant a palm tree today, maybe a year or two years after, no palm fruit yet. So because of that, you, you remove it. You have robbed that tree of the opportunity to stay long enough in the ground to start bearing fruit because there is a growing season before fruit bearing season. What Satan does is that he targets those who are next in line for leadership, next in line for manifestation, next in line for promotion, next in line to produce their own prosperity, their own fruit. And he, through rebellion, through offenses, through all of them, he disconnects them from their connection. When you see these ones that are planted, even in old age, they are still producing. They step into full bearing season. They will do that till old age. If you see somebody that is bearing fruit, you see him years after he's withered, something happened in his life that got him offended with leadership, that got him offended with the ministry, he disconnected. Even if he is there physically, he is going to open himself for all kinds of satanic assault. He leaves, he's going to go around circles. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. This is for members, people who are members of the church. God places them. God places them. God places them. He says, I found my place. I know this is where I belong. And he make a commitment. I'm going to be here till unto death. It's like marriage. But look at ministers. What about ministers? Did God raise them that they are to be roaming up and down? Today he's in this church. Tomorrow he's in another church. Tomorrow he's in that church. Tomorrow. That's why in this ministry, even if you like, be Pope or Archbishop. If you come here, you're going to start with foundation school. 
and go through the system, you grow into ministry. Nobody is going to automatically give you minister, ministry position. It's not going to happen. It's, not, it's children that become sons and sons that become fathers. You don't go and hire them. There's nothing like hiring a ministry. What is going on is that the body of Christ, we don't mind stealing pastors or stealing whatever. We steal sheep, we steal pastors, we steal everything. So at the end of the day, you have people you did not develop, you did not raise. You are not part of their development and you think it works like that. Look at it. God has appointed these in the church. First, apostles. Second, prophets, teachers, after that, miracles. Give another translation. Now, I want you to see that word, set, that you saw in the other place. The same word, planted. Look at it there. God set some in the church. The reason you have the word some is that everybody will not be apostles. Everybody will not be pastors. Everybody will not be... There are different ministries. God sets all the ministries in the church. God set them. God plants members and God plants pastors. Is it not like family? God plants the children. He plants the parents. I don't wake up one day and say, I'm no more an obweli. Neither can my father wake up one day and say he's not an obweli. God can send me on mission. Just like he sent Apostle Paul. Say, pray for me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work where until I call them. And he can decide that the next uh, 10 years of my life, I'm going to be in Russia on mission. It has not affected my family route. When Paul and uh, Barnabas finish their mission, they always return back to the church where? In Antioch. So releasing people into ministry doesn't mean disconnecting them from family. Because God said that. Why you go to the nations, go to the world to heal the world, make sure you have your roots in the church. Being a governor does not remove you from your place in the body. We have first ministry to the Lord, which is number one. We have second ministry to his body, to the brethren. Then we have third ministry to the world. That's the last. Don't reverse the order. So Paul was sent to the nations. Barnabas was sent to the nations. When they finished, they returned back to Antioch. After some long time, they take off again to go and consolidate the work that they have done. Church planters, evangelists who do crusades, people who run around doing programs. Make sure you have a church family you belong to. I respect Reverend Dr. Mobile. Look, with all that he has done around the world, He's in assemblies of God. You are part of a local church. You don't stay in Domino City, Inugu, and be sending your tithe to Domino City, Port Harcourt. If you want to go there, move over there. Put it in the storehouse where the food is coming. Then the ones who are pastors send their tithe up. You don't send it to the church that you pastor. That's why in the priesthood there are high priests, there are priests, there are Levites. In the in the kingly means you have kings, you have princes, you have elders. There is order no matter where you turn. Every ministry pays tithe. You see that. You cannot be doing business in Nigeria and be paying tax to Ghana. It's an abomination. You see all these things all over the East. I, I saw one recently. It carried tithes. I said, is this your personal tithe? If you want to give me an honor, give me. He said, it's the tithe of the church. I said, it's an abomination. It's only a fool that is not trained in the kingdom. A rebel like you. Maybe who has rebelled and started a ministry that will collect it for you. I said, disappear from here. Just go and take the tithe of the branch of the church. Can you imagine a branch of a tree? This is orange or a branch of a tree is bearing mango. I said, disappear from here. He said, man of God, what have I done to you? Don't you want to accept what I brought to you? I said, if it's not an honor, it's a cause you brought to me. If you bring me an honor, a prophet honor, I can accept it. It can even be more than that thing he has in his hand. On trained people. And this is why. This is the East in desolation. 
If that's not where you are placed, leave now, but get the blessing of the place and get out of that place. Because God says, and the question I need to answer for you is, how do I know where God has sent me? How many of you would like to know the answer? Uh-huh. Let's show it to you. There are two ways of knowing it. One is by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The other is by the principle of the word. So I will show you the two. Which one shall I show you first? Let's start with the Holy Spirit part. The way you know that you are a child of God is the way you know the church that you should belong to. How do you know that you are a child of God? Because somebody told you, no. You can have your name in the register of a church and not have it in heaven. The Bible said the way you know that you are a child of God is that the Spirit of God bears witness with your spirit that you are what? So there is a season in a man's life when he wanders around. And when he comes to a place where he belongs, you will see that the, what you are hearing, when you hear the message, when you get involved in the place, the Holy Ghost starts telling you, this is where I've called you. Your destiny is connected. You have, it's not necessarily about hearing voice. Some people tell stories, I hear a voice, ah, and God asked me that you are my father, and I saw you anointing me. That it can happen. But let's not be carried away with such big stories, because sometimes some people have not heard it. It's a witness. You, have, you may not have seen a vision that you are born again, or where Jesus was now telling you, yes, you are truly my son. Uh-uh. There is somebody he sent, it's called the Holy Spirit. And he's one that is the governor of the church. So he knows where people, he tells you this is where, that's why I brought you here. You are not here by accident. I brought you to hear this, because I actually want this beyond the message, this is where I placed you. At that moment, wherever I am, that's why it's not the man that led me to Christ. That is actually my father. And sometimes you find people, it's the same person that led them to Christ. I go and submit myself. If we learn to follow this guidance when it comes to our salvation, we will learn it when it comes to church. We will also learn it when it comes to marriage. Because when you are going to enter a natural family, live with a woman or a man, the same spirit will tell you this is the husband. I've designed for you. He may not look like it now. Accept. Or he may even look like it so much. He has all the money and he says it's not him. Or he has all the money and the Holy Ghost says beyond that money. This is a David. This is your husband. But when God is telling you this person is not. It doesn't mean the person is bad. It means that the design of that person and your design will not match. You know when I see bonds in in radio or TV or any electronics and you want to go and fix, when you go, they have to get the specification because you put it, it will not. There's one giant TV. The pastors gave me as a gift. One time I came back and it blew. It has blown. I think it's one of these China package by Nigeria and then they will put Japan, made in. You put Sanyo, Toshiba. Inside it is Ecclesiastes. But anyway, we decided to fix it. And they were experimenting. They put one IC inside. When they brought the TV home, it was showing on the right side, Paul, on the other side, Barnabas. The face of one human being will break into two. And it's not two screens, oh. One person will break into, and one will have yellow color, one will have blue color. I said, what kind of TV is it? We sent it back. They got another IC. That's how some marriages are. Because they did not know how to follow guidance. Now, you can still rebuild that marriage and make it work. But it would have been better if um, size 45 leg is wearing size 45 instead of 42. You, you know, you know, <laughs> no, you know when you want to measure, <laughs> measure the floor, you say, no, from here to here. I think it's five feet. No. Stop guessing. They are rulers. That's why they have standards. Use the standard. Because what you think might be like, you might be finished, it will be seven, or it might be three. If height is the condition for, for getting married, you don't need to worry yourself. It can be bought in the market. Get the right wife. 
add it, go and buy it. Teach her how to stand on it. Because even in snow, can you imagine everywhere is snow now in Europe and whatever. You see ladies on that thing, walking on ground. And then there's this one they call black eyes. You saw that you can't apply brake. You apply a brake, you will carry your account, throw it inside. So there are some type of tires they used to drive on it. You see a lady on that thing, walking on it. You see them even dancing on very smooth floors. And they are dancing with this guy and doing all kinds of things on that very high and pointed thing. It's a scale. It's a scale. It's length. It's length. Romans chapter 8. From verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's how you know. That's one of the ways you know you are, you are saved. The Holy Ghost will be bearing witness with you. Then verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That Holy Ghost that connects you with the Heavenly Father is also the one that connects you with the spiritual father. And it's also the one that connects you with the spiritual family. Verse 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Then the next verse said, if children, then what? Heirs. And heirs of God and join heirs with who? Christ. The head of the church is Christ. When he connects you into the family, he makes you join heirs of whatever Jesus has you have. Whatever belongs to him belongs to you. It's the same thing with the church family. When the Holy Ghost guides you to where you belong, he gives you an inheritance in that place. And the role that you're supposed to play in destiny, he paves the way for you to do that. He makes sure that you are a partaker of the anointing, the grace, and all of the things that are in that house. John chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. This is Jesus in his earthly ministry. Whenever he says this word, it is not I that does the work, it is the Father in me doing the work. The person he is actually referring to is the Holy Spirit. I want to point that out. But in the order, the way the divine order is in the Trinity, the Son is supposed to point to the Father the spirit is supposed to point to the son. That's why he uses that language. The real person in him that was doing the miracles was the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that is in the believer today. It's that Holy Spirit that used to draw people. And it's the same Holy Spirit that draws people to the ministry where they belong. He tells them this is where you belong. I start giving you witness. No one can come to me except the Father which has sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 45. It is written in the prophets, they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father, come it unto me. You know, when Jesus knew that he, whom the Holy Ghost has spoken to, whom the Lord has already talked to, they will come. And when they, you don't need, you don't need, you don't need them um, to cajole them. It's not because you have to visit them 500 times in a day or pamper them. Mm -mm. The ones that God places in his heart, there is a training, a teaching that doesn't come from the pastor. That comes from the Holy Ghost direct. He said they will not need to teach everyone his neighbor to know the Lord. For from the least of them to the greatest of them shall know me. Every, they shall all be taught of the Lord. Scripture also said, and great, great shall be the peace of your children. When they learn to follow the leading of the Spirit and he guides them. Let me now use this opportunity to make one statement. You see, the Holy Spirit guides people to church, builds the church, establishes the church, plants the church. The Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion. What is the principal side to the same thing? The principal side to the same question, how do I know where I'm placed? There is a simple, let somebody say, I don't know how to hear all this Holy Spirit thing. Okay, I'll just give you a guideline from the word of God. The two must go together. The word and the spirit must always go together in this. 
a very simple one, and you find it throughout the scripture, is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Sheep will be wandering, moving, but God makes the sheep settle down in green pastures. So that's one of the things I tell pastors. All the sermon about people staying, people uh, being planted, is not enough because you cannot violate the word if you're not providing green grasses for the sheep. God will not force the sheep to stay there and die and famish spiritually when you are not feeding them. That's why in Domino City we have a principle. If St. Mary's Church, the, the priest there is not feeding you well, you don't leave the Catholic Church, but what you do is you go to St. Joseph or St. Thomas. You are placed in the family. So we always encourage the principle of multiple church planting. The reason is that if, for example, you are in a local whatever, and you know you are dying, the man is not studying. He's not providing the word. He's not providing. He said, let the word of God dwell in you richly. He's not providing spiritual food to say, ah, I'm planted in this place. You are planted in a church family, but you might have to find I've always said it in this kind of ministry. One of the things that God showed us when he was raising us, he said, it's a house of bread, like Jerusalem. A house of bread, where he will feed nations. There is no pastor here that can catch up with the rate of revelation that is coming into this ministry. You can't. If, if you get a tape now, before you finish listening to that one tape, ten tapes have appeared in Lagos. So all you have to do is get the materials, soak it, and you know, a mother does not bring um, crayfish and meat and ose for the sake of white people, pepper. African pepper is really peppery, not this white pepper that is sweet like this thing. You don't get it, a mother doesn't get that and give to a baby, no. A mother gets it and eat it, then digest it. Then after digesting it, you now feed it to the baby in a digested form. It's called breast milk. If the baby is still inside the womb, you feed it to the baby by transfusion, the way they give us drip. By transfusion, through the umbilical cord. If the baby is out, you feed it to the baby in form of milk. Ah, uh, but if the baby is an adult uh, and they have teeth, uh, you can tell them, this is what I eat. These are the tapes I, li I listen to. These are the kind of books I read. These are the kind of materials I feed on. Oh yeah, you can also feed yourself as well as come to church. That's how you do it. Those ones who are adult will now help you to start feeding the younger ones. To put filling bottles in their mouth. There's enough bread in the system. Revelations will pump out in a year. Will take you at least a decade to consume. So when I see a pastor in a ministry like this, Mounting a pulpit and blowing hot air and not feeding people. He's a vagabond. He's a vagabond. Because if the discipline is only listening to those tapes and then taking time in prayer and in meditation, his spirit will be loaded with substance to feed people. Talk about where he had the discipline of his own study to it. If you watch Jesus in John 5, he said, the son cannot speak anything of his own self. What I hear my father say is the same thing I say. So what the father is preaching per week, that's what Jesus is preaching that time. When he changes message, Jesus changes. And that's what the Holy Spirit is confirming. Because the Trinity works in consensus. 
That's how a ministry is supposed to function. That's how a church is supposed to function. When I was being raised in deeper life, what they used to even do is that a pastor would come and stand on the pulpit and they put Kumuyi's tape. We didn't have video, we didn't have TV. They just put it, cassette. And for an hour, we are listening to Pastor Kumuyi and somebody is just standing on the pulpit like this. And when the tape is true, it now gives us a little explanation of what we have heard and start leading people to Christ. And yet, Deeper Life grew to become the largest church in the whole of Africa. It grew to become the largest church in the whole of Africa. I want to say it one more time. It grew that the world almanac of churches put two chapters, there are uh, two chapters of Deeper Life apart from the headquarters. If you add the headquarters, it becomes three among the largest churches in the world. I don't think you heard me. Let me say it again. The largest churches in the world put apart from Bagada, then they put two other chapters among the largest churches in the world. When they list Yongicho, list Yongicho's brother, list some of those large churches, they list deeper life. And Church of God mission did not appear there. Yet the Hosa had more aggressive anointing. Why? Many of their pastors did not know this secret. You see some of them that are preaching on a robot, some are preaching Kereko plan, some are preaching because he brings ministers. And so they all took up. But the Bible says it's an abomination to sow mixed crops in your vineyard. You have two seeds from everywhere. Today is still Egypt. Today there is confusion. Because it's like a woman that sleeps with every man. You don't know which child comes from the father and which one is from him. Does it mean you don't have Messages from others to what? No. What it means is that you have, you have to know submission is come under the mission. What is her mandate? What is that thing we're given? And ministries that are wise also bring in people that speak in line with that. That's why you can't get, get to a Kenehagen and see somebody saying fall down and die. Kenehagen committee. You can't get to a, a, a Kenehagen Copeland. You see him with the Kriflos, with the Jerusalem, with the, with the faith guys. You can't get there and see somebody uh, saying one crazy thing. They won't allow you. You start creating confusion in the system. Because there are families in Zion. There are families in Zion. We who are from the tribe of Judah have dominion mandates. That job is <laughs> true. But they are Levites. And all the families are important in the Israel of God. But they have different prophetic destinies. So based on your calling, God will place you in one of those families. Based on the kind of future you have, he will place you in one of them. And he expects you to be loyal and to be committed. But the other principle is this. Psalm 22 said, he makes me to lie down. That means he plants me, he makes me to settle down, get committed. In a place we in green pastures. The second thing is besides still waters. If the water is dry, no water, no food, it, it keeps that sheep roving. That's why some people you can't blame them. You see them even after 30 years, they are still searching. Why? And that's why in any ministry you get sons by two methods. You get sons by birth and by adoption. Jesus was not the original person working with Andrew and this other guy. They were John the Baptist. But we finally moved on with Jesus and ends up getting inheritance and becoming an apostle. That's by adoption. By the time the words of that minister have settled in their heart, it will also produce birth. Yes. Because you can't just say even if you are in a place and all the whatever, just stay there. Then you are saying that it's right for Jonathan to have stayed with Saul. He would died with him. His own future was destroyed by that. His future. He knew where God is. And God showed him. It's by revelation. He made covenant with David. But you know the natural side. Sometimes, either I've known this pastor or the church is close to our house. So I just attend because it's near. 
You don't attend church because it's near. If you have to drive 10 hours, drive. You attend it because I find spiritual food. I find still water, the presence of the Holy Spirit. You also attend it because the Holy Spirit has shown me that this is where I belong. And this is where my destiny is. I go there and get my roots in the ground and get planted. And actually, you also develop fibrous root and, and, and like a palm tree. So you become a person of all season, all weather. If church is going to crisis, we will be there. We will fight and come out of it. If we have war, we will be there. We will fight and come out of it. We are going to beauty, we will be there. We are going through the not fair weather Christian. Rainy season Christian. Dry season, you can't trust them. It's the same thing with ministers. I have a ministry, I have a calling, and all that. And God chooses where he has placed you. Everybody is not called to pioneer a church. Many are going to face judgment on the day of Christ. There are those called to work in ministries. Pioneer church, you have ability to pioneer, pioneer it under that ministry. You have ability to do this, start bank, start it in that ministry, plant, school, plant it in that ministry. In the East, the spirit of independence, everybody wants to go and become a Pope. Sorry for you. Sorry for you. Make sure you have apostolic grace. Because you're going to use a pastoral and go and start that thing and you can't obtain direction from the master for that thing. So you get a, a group of people stuck in the wilderness. Because you think it's a matter of leading people. Oh yeah, let's go. We are going to promise. Where is the promise now? You don't know. Where are you leading people? You don't know. I met a pastor in Lego. He, told me, he said, we have arrived. I said, what do you mean? He said, ah, we have 2,000 people. We have really arrived and God has blessed us. I said, having 2,000 people is not arriving. Taking 2,000 people to the promised land is arriving. I said, where is the promised land that you are taking this people? The pastor is lost. The people he's leading are lost. Because he's somebody that is placed. It's a branch of a tree that pulled off. We're going to have a lot of things on the judgment seat of Christ. A lot of issues. You will be there. You will see it. You see rebuke and flogging. He said, the one that does not know his master's will and do it that which is worthy of beating. He will be beaten with few stripes. He didn't say they were exempting. Ignorance is not an excuse. He didn't know Jesus said we will still flog him on that day. But he said the one that knows and didn't do the will of his master will be beaten with many stripes. Now you know the truth. You can do what you like with it. If you make it in the rapture, you are going to face the judgment seat of Christ. If you are not careful, you won't make it at all. Because rebellion destroys lives. If we can correct this in the East, if you see the kind of move of God we are going to have here, you get to US, you see some, some of the mightiest pastors they had here in Nigeria. He took off and traveled abroad on their own. Took off. They thought the dollar, that is, you pluck it in trees in US. Some of them, you meet them there, if you see how dry, dead, some are now bound in chains like Samson in iniquity. Some with strange women, some with all kinds of things. If you see all kinds of pastors, there, there is this one, he had the gift of working on miracles. I, I watched him once, he would walk into, he would start singing, he closes his eyes. He wouldn't even, you know, he would just sing, sing, sing. This glory will fall. One time, he ran and touched a wall. Just a, a, a wall like this. Everybody that rushed to that wall got here, including people in the wheelchair. They started pushing people in the wheelchair towards that side. All of them were getting up. He just transferred the anointing on a wall. I watched him. One time, he walked into a meeting, he was singing. He sang, sang, sang. There was a little baby that had twisted leg, had never walked, crippled, but the legs are twisted. 
He sang, 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 sang. Then he opened his eyes and turned his eyes and looked at that baby. And looked and saw the mother the other way. And he said, baby, oh yeah, run after your mother. The baby got up and ran. And ran. He said, woman, stand there. Don't run. Through. He ran and went on. If you see the kind of power this guy was manifesting. So, he pulls off from the branch. In 90 days, he died. Now, he's not dead physically. He disappeared from the map of ministries. Disappeared from the map of the world. Disappeared from even Nigeria. That even in Nigeria now, when they talk about anything, including small, nobody brings him. Nobody remembers him. It's so shocking how these things happen. It's so shocking. Even in old age, they will still be bearing fruit. So what the devil does with what he did with the prodigal son is he takes them from wealth to the pigs then. And the reason the, the repentance does, does not come immediately is that the first year, sometimes months, they are still enjoying what they've collected. You see, if you disconnect a branch from a tree, it doesn't wither immediately, especially if it's palm tree. The leaves, some palm tree leaves can stay with you up to three days, some up to one week. And then my grandmother learned a well, putting them inside wells that have water. So sometimes they stay up to a month. You see, bring them that are fresh. In order to preserve them for the animals to eat them, they put them inside the wells and load them there. They bring them two weeks after they are still very green. But then, all of a sudden, the forces of death kicks in. Because he's died long ago. And then death manifests. The rebellious dwell in dry land. The problem of the East is lack of consensus. If we can deal with that spirit of independence and with that spirit of rebellion, the kingdom of God will come and stay in this land and go from here to affect the nations. God bless you. I hope you learned something from this. impacted by this message please share your experience with pastor david obweli email address dominion image media at yahoo.com or call 01792 0803-435-7959 0803-590-9900 0805-315-3823by this message please share your experience with pastor david obweli email address dominion image media at yahoo.com or call 017926879 0803-435-7959 0803-590-9900 0805-315-3823